Now there's a second part to this cleaning regime and that's uh, copper remediation. Uh, like we said before, you're only gonna, this is uh, the, the first 11 steps I just talked about a minute ago. That's gonna be your normal maintenance procedure. That's gonna be when you set it down on the rack if you, if you need to do cleaning because you're concerned about corrosion. Now if you've gone out in a day and it's real dry and it was clean and you, uh, you shot a few rounds off, you can go ahead and set that thing uh, on the rack for a pretty long time, unless you're going to encounter real humid conditions. You're, uh, like we talked about in our chemical erosion videos, gun po modern gunpowder or propellant recipes are uh, very, very uh, clean. And the nitrogen particularly in there is a kind of a corrosion inhibitor. So you can actually set a rifle on the rack if, if you're using a modern uh, propellant for years. And it's not going to have any kind of negative effect, and it's not going to promote any kind of corrosion, even with uh, the full powder fouling in there. The issue that arises is, like I said before, if you're anticipating real corrosive environments, if it's real humid or something, or if, if you had grit in there. So clean as needed is the name of the game. Now, we did mention before that there will uh, probably be a time uh, in the, the life of the barrel where you might have excessive uh, coppering. Uh, particularly in real hot loads, if you're shooting a super magnum, like one of those 7 millimeter ultra mags or something that's a real hot load, uh, you might deposit quite a lot of copper every shot. And uh, if you notice your muzzle velocity is starting to climb, like we said before, if there's any indicator that you have excessive coppering, we're going to have to do some copper remediation. So how do we do that? That's a pretty simple procedure. What we're going to do for this is uh, we're going to wet a patch with sweets, 762, or some kind of... Um, you don't want to use any kind of abrasive copper solvent. On the bore break-in video uh, before this one, I did talk about bench rest shooters' uh, break-in procedures, and they did um, they do use some of the JBs and uh, some of the abrasives like that in the break-in procedure. But for a standard copper uh, remediation practices, you're not going to use any kind of abrasives. It's just standard sweet 762 is a, is a real good one to use or any other kind of uh, copper solvent of your choosing that's non-abrasive. So we're going to wet a patch with that stuff. And you're not going to want to use a brush on this because when you're using a copper solvent, that's going to pretty much eat up your brush, uh, a copper brush, obviously. So we're going to push that patch through the breech, just like we did with the, you know, with the bore guide and everything. And you're going to push it up to the last inch of the muzzle. So you're going to have that, uh, it's going to be a, a patch soaked in sweets pushed just within an inch of the end of the muzzle. And you're going to fill that last inch. You're going to have the, the rifle kind of vertically oriented with the, the pointing up, you know. And you're going to fill that last inch uh, of the bore with sweets, 762, okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to slowly pull that rod back towards the chamber and you're going to stop when you reach the throat. You don't want it to drain out through the chamber. You're going uh, The second you detect the throat or you can measure it out, you're just going to stop. And you're going to wait for three to five minutes. And then after that, you're going to slowly push that patch, real slowly like, and uh, exit out the muzzle. Now, you can save the solvent if, if you can. Actually, you know, many uh, copper-removing formulas use activated positively charged ions that have an affinity for copper and its oxides. So like uh, when when you got a, the solvent soiled with copper fouling, these actually become even more positively charged with dissolved copper, and that actually works better the next time. So it'll attack the hardened copper in the bore more aggressively than it would if it was still the clean sweets. So you can save it. Uh, as long as you want to make sure... That you, uh, when you do this, when you do any kind of copper remediation, you have all the powder solvent out first. So you want to do this on a dry bore. And I'd also recommend running some patches through there uh, ahead of time if you had any oil that you put in there. So just run a, a dry patch through a couple times. Make sure it's dry before you do this. Um, but the reason for the the filling up the last inch and pulling it through is this is kind of you're going to let the chemical do the work on this this copper for the most part you're not going to be using a, a brush so if you want the chemical to use the work just getting it wet usually isn't enough so you want to really drench it in this stuff so um after scrubbing the bore using patches after these uh after you've uh removed it you pushed it out the muzzle you're going to go ahead and do 10 passes with uh patches on a jag or as needed 
it's possible that it's going to take more than 10 passes. And you're going to clean all the, the copper solvent out of the barrel using patches wetted with uh, WD-40 again, and that's to chase out the Sweet 7.62. Um, and then you're going to follow that by a clean patch until completely dry. So basically, you're going to know when you got the copper out when you have, uh, it's going to look kind of green on, on those patches, but it, when, it, when pretty much all the green is gone and it, uh, they're coming out relatively clean, that's uh, good enough. You've got your copper uh, back down to zero. Now, uh, one thing you have to be aware of is that you're going to have to reestablish your copper equilibrium now. So every time you do this, every time you perform copper remediation in your bore, you're going to have to completely reestablish copper e equilibrium from ground zero again. Now, if you did do the uh, bench rest shooter's barrel breaking procedure, the super aggressive one that we talked about on the last video that the bench rest shooters like to use, I didn't recommend that for our pur purposes, but if you did that, uh, you're not going to have to worry so much about establishing copper equilibrium because it's going to slowly build up over time, and you're going to have a heck of a time determining where that equilibrium point is because it's just going to kind of keep climbing slowly all the time. So uh, if you did the other break-in procedure like we talked about, or if you did not do any break-in procedure, then you're in the other category, which is just a standard rifle bore that's not really broke in with those aggressive techniques, and uh, you'll be able to find that copper equilibrium because it will have a rather sharp build-up curve initially, and then it'll stabilize. And you're going to be able to, to uh, discern exactly where you're at. You're going to know when you've uh, achieved equilibrium, when your group sizes shrink, and when your muzzle velocity stabilize. So you might have a real big group right at first. And this is a, lo a lot of guys running this problem, and they can't get the rifle to group, especially with the brand new rifle that hasn't yet uh, had any copper deposition. And uh, they'll be trying to do load development, and they'll be aggressively cleaning it each time they shoot with the full copper removal. And they're ne they never reach that copper equilibrium, so the rifle never really has a chance to uh, have that stable bore conditions. So uh, a lot of guys notice that as their uh, bore starts to get soiled with copper, uh, that the group sizes do shrink. And that's the reason for that, like we talked about a lot earlier. So that's when you've hit your copper equilibrium. It usually takes 20 to 60 rounds. It depends on what kind of loads you're shooting and what exact kind of bore conditions you have. A lot of, a lot of variables in there. So typically, you shoot a couple boxes of cartridges through there, and you'll be able to tell when your group sizes shrink back down to normal. Now, it's very important that you understand that you only clean the copper out of your bore if it's necessary for our shooting discipline. Now, for other uh, types of rifles and firearms, uh, you, you can go ahead and use a lot more aggressive cleaning. But for our shooting discipline, we're going to want minimal disturbance because we're really, really cutting hairs when we talk about extreme range precision shooting. Uh, you don't want to change the bore conditions every day you go out. That's going to be counterproductive. You're never going to get consistent shot placement. You're not going to be able to de develop charts very well because it's going to be hitting all over the place. Every time you clean your bore, you're changing the uh, bore dimensions and the frictional dynamics. So you're only going to want to clean your bore if necessary, particularly the copper uh, remediation. Getting the copper out like we just talked about, you only want to do that if you have to. You don't want to just do it for, for the heck of it, okay? So the less you disturb the bore, the less muzzle velocity variation and point of impact shift that you're going to experience. So minimal disturbance is ideal for our shooting discipline. You're going to only clean when needed. So you're going to want to keep track of those things we listed earlier so that you know what you're looking for. Those indicators, typically muzzle velocity climb, they can't be accounted for due to uh, ammunition temperature or uh, normal uh, rifle erosion or uh, also your dispersion. If all of a sudden you're getting erratic performance and you visually inspect it and it looks like, man, that sucker's getting pretty bad, that's your indicator. So minimal disturbance, that's the key here. Uh, another note is uh, if you're cleaning a semi-automatic sniper system, like a AR-15 or AR-10 or something like that, you're going to require more frequent cleanings, obviously, to ensure proper operation of the rifle. So on those, you're going to want to go ahead and go through the, the full recommended uh, cl maintenance program, on depending on what kind of rifle you're, you're shooting there. Uh, but w this is concentrating on the bore. So when I'm talking about this... Uh, Maintenance schedule, for our purposes, 
I'm I'm particularly talking about the bore of the rifle. Uh, like I said, you want to make sure the action's nice and clean, ensure proper operation, your gas system's clean, whatever kind of uh, weapon you're using depends, you know, on what you're shooting. All right, so that's uh, the basics on our minimal disturbance cleaning regime. Like I said, uh, I can't remember the last time, um, just offhand here, I think it was about 400 rounds, 500 rounds through my uh, 338 uh, when, when I cleaned it last. And uh, it, it can go for a few hundred rounds without a problem. And actually, the reason I did have to go ahead and clean is because it got packed up with snow and stuff, so it was real wet. So I thought it'd be wise to go ahead and do the, the maintenance. But uh, otherwise, just keep an eye on everything and do your inspection each time and uh, play it by ear. Now I know it might seem kind of weird, this uh, maintenance schedule that we went over, but uh, for our shooting discipline, um, we're really going to have to, like I said, ensure that we're not changing things up inside that bore. That's not going to help us out. So this is going to be different than what you're going to read in the magazines or probably on a lot of the blogs or in most of your manuals. So if you are kind of forced on a real aggressive cleaning system, uh, involuntarily, like if you're in the service or if you're on a department and that uh, they just go ahead and uh, make you do it, you're, you're going to have to be aware of these things still so that when you're going to deploy your uh, weapon system, you can basically know what's going to happen. So you're going to uh, know that you're going to have to reestablish at least your powder falling uh, equilibrium. And uh, if you did uh, do a super aggressive copper remediation, uh, if you didn't do that full uh, barrel break-in procedure, like we talked about for the bench rest shooters, you are going to have to reestablish your copper equilibrium Green if you're going to want to make a first round hit. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty much impossible. It will throw you off enough to miss by quite a bit at a thousand meters or more, particularly uh, if you if you did an aggressive cleaning on your rifle and then uh, you go ahead and shoot, it's going to miss by quite a bit. So these are all things that you need to be aware of one way or the other. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is... Ammunition inconsistencies. This is still the portion on internal ballistics. There's a lot to this internal ballistics stuff. It's very, very dynamic science. There's a lot of interrelated uh, things that are going on when we talk about all the different vibration patterns in the rifle and all the mechanical forces at work, all the different frictions and things that are experiencing. You've got all the chamber pressures changing for various reasons. Now we're going to talk about ammunition inconsistencies. 